Do you? Oh, do you have a story? I don't. I don't really have anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything offhand here. Bob. Yes. We should just roll the credits. We can do that. Roll them. Welcome to the greatest show online. I am wearing a Nine Inch Nails t-shirt, and I am DJ Allen. I'm that cool Bob guy, um, Bob Miato, wearing a tank top. Yes, and you look a little bit like... Uh, I, I'm a little washed out here. There we go. You look a little bit like Cornelius uh, with the beard. Uh, you need a stocking cap or something. Yeah, and and they pickaxe. Yeah, yes, and you need to lick it often. I need to, yeah, I like slam it into the ice, and then we, where's he going? Ah, anyone who is uh, watching this, the Cornelius that we're referring to is the one from the Rudolph uh, cartoon. It's stop that claymation. Stop, yeah, stop motion animation. Yeah, Rudolph. Why is my damn... Shut that light off. <laughs> Please? I don't know where the switch is. Oh, her. Okay. Yeah, her. <laughs> Here we go. You drink... I don't know you why. You drink coffee? Yes, I drink coffee. I actually... This is coffee here. And... Oh, right. Um, I don't normally put sugar in it. I used to put sugar in it all the time, and but today I did. I put sugar in it. <laughs> For those watching the video, we can see my face. We have Snickerdoodle coffee. We don't use sugar in ours either, by the way. Snickerdoodle flavored coffee, and um, she poured some peppermint mocha uh, Cream. creamer in there, and she she likes it, and I, I don't. Yet I took a second swig of it, and and uh, well, the second swig is what got me right there. That was like <laughs> uh, that, that's the equivalent of oh my gosh, this milk tastes awful. Try it. And you okay, and you try it, and yeah, this does taste awful. And you look at the next person in the room and say, here, try it. Yeah, that was your uh, second swig. Um, was it better than the first one? Well, I was. I guess I was more ready for it. <laughs> now, there is something that I found at the gas station that is supremely awesome. Uh, I started doing this when I was um, very, very tired. And I would get the big old uh, fountain pop, and they had the cherry syrupy stuff. So I put the cherry syrupy stuff in there, and then they also had these coffee shots. The coffee shots had a whole lot of caffeine in it, and they tasted like coffee. So I would put those in the cherry cola, and it gave it the cherry with the coffee, almost gave it a uh, chocolatey taste. I liked it, but then again, I... I think I burnt out my taste buds with military food, so just saying. Yeah. When, well, yeah, and, and I understand where you're at there. Navy story time. Uh, when you have an MRE <laughs> and you start picking out your favorite flavors of MREs, you you know your taste buds are pretty much shot. Yeah. Yeah, I still have MREs. Um, Do not you? The ones that we, not the ones that we had when we were in military, but uh, I can't really. I acquired them. <laughs> I uh, I had a Lots of them. I had one or two and I I made her eat some and she didn't like them. I like them. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know where most of mine went. They're great for like survival situations when you don't have food and things like that. But they're um, I sold a whole bunch of them to a friend of mine. Um, but the majority of MREs get eaten. Uh, not because you need to. But because you're like, hey, check out this. And you're like showing your friends who have never had an MRE the awesomeness of MRE. 
Yeah. They did you That's know? Well, know. after after I got out, they started putting pound cake in them, and that pound cake is delicious. Yes, it is. Now the pound cake. I remember the pound cake when I was in the military. I mean, we had that while I was in. Uh, now back in the day, back when my dad was in, hell, they had uh, MREs. They had uh, packs of cigarettes in them. That was packs way before cigarettes. My did you know that the entire calories that you should eat in a day is in one package of MRE? I've heard that. Uh, ironically, while we were in, there was times we would eat them three times a day. Yeah. And I wonder why I'm fat. No, no. The thing is that we burnt a lot of calories at the same time, and also the thing that uh, you don't know about that a lot of people don't know about, about MREs. Wow, well, I'm just, like. Freaking talking all fucked up. A motherfucker. What's that over there? Oh, MREs. So, <laughs> yes. Um, you can't just take the parts of it that you like and eat it. That'll fuck with your system. You have to eat everything in the MRE to balance your system. Otherwise, you'll get the shits, or you'll get constipated, or you'll get somehow unpleasant feelings. You're supposed to eat everything in there. Well, yeah, but I don't. I, I think that I've not eaten. I think that I've not eaten pieces of it and haven't had problems. Hmm. I know that when I ate the peanut butter w on the cracker, hmm. um, you you couldn't shit for days. <laughs> <laughs> that peanut butter, I had that's very useful stuff. I used to keep some of it out in the apartment. And uh, I use that to put on the mouse traps. Did you know that the, the for lack of a better term, Kool Aid mix in those uh, could take uh, corrosion off of brass? I've heard that. Yeah. We one day in Okinawa. We, the garage door didn't close to the place where the SHs had all the equipment, so we had to spend a few extra hours there while they fixed the door, so we always had to have somebody there. Rather than each of us go to the galley to eat during the galley time, we had the galley bring us stuff, and then they brought us that thing of bug juice. Well, most of us wanted pop at the time, so uh, we didn't really eat, drink any of the bug juice, so I was told to dump the bug juice out when we were done eating, and I dumped it in the front little front lawn. It was a fairly small square worth of, of lawn. Um, everywhere where the bug juice uh, fell, um, the grass died. Uh, see, what you don't know is that a, uh, a rare plant grew in its place after you left. That... It's possible, it had, I suppose. That had that eyes. Mutated. We have a viewer, Bob. Okay, I made that up. Hi, viewer. Viewer, you can ask us questions. I'm not sure how that works on your end, but I can see them on the side of my screen here, and then I can answer. we can answer them. Uh, I just posted a link on Facebook. Well, I shared your link on Facebook. Yeah, I decided to share on everybody's... Uh, Everybody's page. That's good thinking. I know. <laughs> I did. Oh, I don't eat you? No. Right. There's uh, something I was told to talk about earlier, and I don't know what it was. Well, it well, let's let's start out with the the common. Uh, your beard looks glorious and full. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I am. Yours too. Except, well, except for this part right here, I'm very happy with my beard. <laughs> I This is as long as I've ever let the neck grow out, and it's driving ah. me nuts. Right. Now, are you trimming anything on your neck, or is you growing just... Is... Yeah, I'm not trimming nothing. This is like... So at some point, two months worth of... at some point, your neck is going to disappear because the beard just goes right into your chest hair. Dude, I'm going Wolfman. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've been known to howl at the moon. I've been there when you've howled at the moon. Right. Yeah, that's true. And chasing cats. <laughs> uh, 
Do you remember Petty you remember Officer? Do you know, Do you remember Petty Officer Vin Lewin? Vin Lewin? That does not sound familiar. He he was the CE and he was Filipino. I don't remember how long he was in, but the first time I was in Okinawa, we used to tease everybody that he ate cats. <laughs> and then one day, well, we first off, it was noted that there weren't any cats on the base at all. And oh. then one day, I saw him chasing a cat across the lawn, and the jokes stopped because it became very real. <laughs> Yeah, that was a game in Puerto Rico because the cats would, while we were playing our games, would call, we'd always have the door open, and um, we would play our games up there. And when we see a cat walk by the door, which they tended to do, I just thought it was hilarious to bolt away from the game that we were playing and run after the cats. You must have been on the ground floor. No, no, no. We were on the third floor up. This is when we were playing in uh, your guys' room. Yeah, because we, I was going to say, we were in the third floor, and we didn't do a whole lot of, well, I didn't do a whole lot of bolting out on yeah. the third floor. Uh, but I also went over the railing on the floor, and I would do that thing where you hang down so that your feet are on the second floor, and you just kind of fling yourself self into the air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, I came up with some topics, so I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to set this scenario up here. Okay, are you ready? 42. Hey, man, it's not my fault you asked the wrong question. Okay, am I ready? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I think I am. We uh, are going to play a role-playing game, and you are the game master, okay? All We're right. just going to say that this is a DD and d game. Okay, my favorite. I, I am one of many people playing this so game. So am I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And when they come, when everybody comes up with their characters, I come up to you and I say, "I'm playing an immortal." What is your response to that? Uh, I would I would put limitations on that, but I would allow you to do it. Like there's the divas in fourth edition that every time they die, they come back to life with the knowledge of their past lives, but they start they're born again with the knowledge of each previous life. I would find a way to make it to where you are indeed immortal, but you can still die. You still have your uh, things that can happen to you. No, as as a very anal player, I am very adamant about not even being able to die. I should. I'm. I want to walk onto a battlefield and I want people to stab me, and I sure I can bleed, but I keep <laughs> on going. Cool. Um, yeah, I would find a way to to fuck with you, because that's what I do, um, to where you may be, I don't know, caught doing something and in prison for life, or something that makes it to where you regret that choice. Um, okay, well, that's that's not the area I was trying to get you to go in, but that's okay, because this, this opens up the discussion. Well, there's many, many possibilities of how to handle something like that. I mean... But look at Wolverine and all the battles that he was in. But he had, like, uh, forgetting his past. So, I mean, there's a possible way of going about it. Yeah, you could do this, but every once in a while, block out old stuff, and you become pretty much a new creation of yourself. Well, the idea behind this was I listened to a podcast, and they were talking about people who wanted to be uh, what, what they call... Uh, beautiful and unique snowflakes. Fight <laughs> club. So, uh, what? Were they in their twenties? Maybe. Anyway, so their example, and I like this example because it's extreme. This, uh, this is from uh, Fear the Boot. Are you being called? I don't know what that is. It's kind of like, you know, the sound of a door slowly creaking. Uh. But it's not. It's just creaking. Slowly. My guitar gently weeps, but that's as close as I get. You think it's not an angel? Weeping is terrifying. <laughs> that well, that that's my other one. Uh, but okay, wait. It's the first off. Beautiful, oh, unique snowflakes. Okay, so their example yes. on Fear the Boot was 
you're all playing a game of accountants, and everybody's got to be an accountant in this accounting department, but there's that one asshat that has to be Galactus, an indestructible, world-eating creature. <laughs> So that that was their premise: is how do you fix that? And and what they uh, what they were saying is, you ask the person who wants to play Galactus what it is about Galactus that they want, because you're playing an accounting game, and Galactus does not make a good accountant. <laughs> well, I, at least I don't think so. I don't know, man. He could be really good with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one planet goes in. I don't know what comes out. <laughs> He's very efficient with what he uh, consumes. Uh, but yeah, that would quite possibly allow it, but it would be restricted. It would be um, like the, the the wish rings. There are spells and rings and stuff in the game that allow you to make wishes. Now, these wishes are very... You can ask for anything, um, but your wording, if it's not perfect, as a dungeon master or game master, um, I will fuck with you. And I've, I've been a recipient of this, like, I don't remember my exact wording, but I, basically I was looking to be paid off in a very large way with platinum, and uh, mm -hmm. my platinum came in the form of very large chunks that fell from the sky, like... Billions, <laughs> billions of dollars worth of platinum fell from the sky. Now I collected as much as I could, and and I was fairly rich thereafter. But I destroyed large chunks of the surrounding land masses, uh, all because I didn't word <laughs> this correctly. I mean, even something as simple as, um, let's say you have a a red dragon. Um, if you could somehow kill this red dragon, you get the experience points for killing the red dragon. It's a low level character. You're going up levels, like insane levels, just for doing that. So if you somehow at a low level acquire a ring that allows you to have a wish, and you wish, you know, I wish that, that dragon was dead, well, how long does the red dragon live? You can all of a sudden, bam, be teleported to the end of his life. Your wish has been achieved. Bam, it's dead now. And you're 2,000 years in the future. So, I mean, if you don't word that stuff just right, I mean that's a that's a big part of the wish ring is you get to fuck with them, and it all depends on um, if they're really cocky about it, you fuck with them more. If they're like, man, I can really use a new horse. All right, well there's one. <laughs> Poof, there it is. <laughs> but I mean, if really cocky about it, the cockier they are, the you know you gotta. You know what it's like to be a guy. You gotta out cock them. Just saying. <laughs> You've got to outcock them. Yes, you have to be a. So it's a dick measuring contest. They kind of like that. <laughs> the. Uh... <laughs> 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 yeah. Now I I love brains, but you always have the people who. Uh, well, the game that I played inside the game was fucking with the DM. Uh, I used to love. It was great when I was able to pick spells. When the dungeon master looks at me and says, "Go ahead and pick any spell on that list." All right, you write down, and he doesn't know what it is, or he might ask you what it is. But you were able to come up with creative ways of using those spells, and you were able to do things that he wasn't expecting, just to fuck with them. And uh, such as walking into a room and you say. Um, you know, when there's these uh, skeletons all over the room, and you walk in there and you say, wow, what happened here? And the dungeon master's like, you don't know. And you look at it, I what at you? Uh, the statue doesn't talk to you. It does now. You gave me this talk to stone spell. The statue is talking to me. You know, it's... But they forget that you have something or something like that. And... Well, I've... I've been part of groups like this. I I don't want to be part of groups any like this anymore. I, I don't want the game master to be in a competition with the players, which is what I always seem to be involved in. That happens often. Yeah, I, I want to 
I want to have a, a carefully crafted story that can be altered by the players to fit their characters and take it in interesting directions, not, oh, well, he's got a plan to have us become uh, vampire rulers of the entire North American continent. Uh, let's all fly to Europe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've played games like that. We've played games where it seemed like the, um, the guy running it his goal was a TPK, total party kill. Um, that was his goal. Our goal was to try to stay alive while he was trying to kill us. Me, not so much. I don't. That's not fun for anybody. Um, that's a that's a piston contest. I mean, like players. most like most of our vampire games in the days of yore, when we were in the in the navy, tended to be. I want to screw with the with the storyteller, and the storyteller is going to screw with us because all Ivy wanted was combat fests, and I don't. I I wanted character development stuff going on, and I never got that. Right. Yeah, I agree. I want the um, like backstories. I have had pages of backstory for a character. Like, you know, I I've gone into great depth to create. Backstories for my character, or uh, me and a friend of mine are both obsessed with um, creating the worlds to where it's not just you're walking down this road, but this is the name of the road. This is the name of the farmer who owns the field on the side of the road, and you just go into like he frequents this bar. He was dating this the the, the bartender's daughter who has a dog. You know, like at what point? Is too much preparation, too much preparation. Yeah, the dog, that's too much. Well, <laughs> and, unless it's got something to do with the story. Well, I, for my first vampire character, the one that you in, would have ended up uh, hanging out with at one, some point when you joined us, um, I had created, I, I had given her quite a lengthy background and backstory, and then I handed Chris, our storyteller, six or seven pages worth of handwritten backstory. <laughs> he literally put it beside him and we never saw it again. Wow. He never used it. I don't even think he read it. <laughs> I have also, I played with a group that, uh, this one friend of mine, whose name is John, and he was a uh, genius when he came to that stuff. We were playing a uh, I don't remember which game it was. Marvel, or one of the Marvel type games, DC, Marvel, one of the superhero games. Um, and one of the things that I got was I needed not backgrounds, the other one, contacts. One of my contacts was um, Detective Resner, and the other one was, and I just put some name. I don't remember what the name was, but it was uh, an actress. Well, so we're playing. And, and I forgot about these things. I just wrote shit down because, you know, you needed something. So I just wrote these things down. This could be useful later, maybe. And he used those things to where um, this creature, I killed it. I was a Green Arrow sort of character, which I love that type of character. And um, so this creature regenerates. We killed it, and it comes back to life. And I kill it again. And so the cops are here. We call the cops and everything. This thing is hanging from the garage. And the cops don't mind that I'm standing there with this gun in my hand. Um, I mean, they're a little freaked out by it. But he, uh, this creature that's dead lunges for the cop. And I kill him. You know, I kill the creature again. And I'm standing there with my gun. Well, in comes Detective Resner. And now all of a sudden I'm working for them kind of undercover. And... Oh, man, it was cool. He, I ended up going, um, of course, he also used that stuff against me, such as the actress was a chick that I used to go out with before she was an actress. She was like an old uh, college sweetheart. To her. Um, and, I, and I loved the fact that he because it was so cool. He didn't bring her into the story until the one character as an NPC, me and her hooked up, we became like close. And then he brings the girl in to totally fuck with my world. So now I had a decision to make. 
he was very good on taking the story and expanding it and creating like a uh, emotional and uh, I mean he was he was good. He was one of the best game masters I've ever played. With. Unfortunately, they smoked a lot of weed and my wife didn't want me hanging out there. <laughs> Damn weed! <laughs> I am somebody who would like to integrate backstories into role playing games. Also, however. I've never actually gotten to do that in a role-playing game, but I used to do a lot of email simming, which means, um, and you can find this out on like obsidianfleet.net, uh, <clears throat> what an email sim is is basically, uh, in that specific uh, situation, is uh, you are the commanding officer of a Star Trek vessel, and pe other people join your crew, and it's basically collaborative okay. fiction writing. Nice. One of the last ships I commanded, um, every member of my crew had a certain level of backstory put up, and like relatives that were either assumed dead because of backstory stuff that they had, or or shady past things going on, and I I wove <coughs> one one story. And I linked every single one of the crew members' stuff into that. And the entire time we were writing out the stuff, when because as the captain, you you slowly reveal facts through your your logs. And uh, every time I revealed a fact, I would get somebody sending a message going, "Is that from? Did you just? That is so awesome." <laughs> <laughs> no, but I. <laughs> I wasn't the captain of that ship very long, and I did blow my wad in that one story. So basically, I didn't have a whole lot more to draw from after that. But <laughs> I ran out of That's time cool. anyway. Yeah, everybody was. I mean, everybody was completely. They're like, I can't wait for the next one to come out. And I'm like, I I can't spend every waking moment doing this. But you know. Yeah. No, there was a a role playing game. I don't know what it was called, and I never got a chance to play it, but. Holy shit. It costs like, oh, I think it was like $25 a month to play this game. Or some like, something like that. And what it was was um, they got all your information, and you can get a phone call in the middle of the night saying, um, you know, whatever. You can get emails, texts. Um, you can get a message at work. And, you know, an urgent message from you know at, while you're at work. So I mean, it's not just you get letters in the mail saying, "Hey, you know, uh, if you're receiving this, this is what happened. I had strict orders that if I disappeared, to have this sent to you." You know, just like so, it wasn't just a role playing game, but it's like this shit's really going on in your life. There. I totally want to do that. I constantly want to have something going on to where I randomly send a letter or something to somebody. Somebody that knows what it actually is, but have that like a yeah. piece of a treasure map or something. That reminds me of that that uh, that movie, I think it's called The Game. Where Michael Douglas? Yes. Okay. Yes. I've seen it. Uh, it's pretty good. I think I have it. But uh, it was kind of like that, but it was like before that movie came out, and I don't remember what it was called, but I was reading about it in some freaking magazine. I don't even know what kind of magazine would have something like that in there. But, uh, yeah, it costs, but because they had, like, people working on it, like, I don't know, it sounded pretty cool. If, if, if you get a letter in the mail, say, yeah, I'll give you a call on this date, your phone's ringing on that date, you know, it was like, Pretty cool shit. Yeah, but alas, I would probably be the only one doing it, and it would suck because I was the only one playing, and <laughs> nobody would pay me to do my part of it so that I could do it for everybody. Yeah, I constantly want to make, like, random... I want to put random things on CDs and leave them places. <laughs> Mail oh, random... Yeah. What's that one thing called? Geocaching. Geocaching? Whatever that's called. Have you ever heard of that? Geocaching? Caching. Yeah, that's it. Geocaching. Where you use your GPS and you're like looking for things out in the world. You can do a role-playing game 
that sort of thing. Augmented reality is what you're talking about, sir. That's the name. That's the name of that game. Well, no, that's the name of that genre. And the reason I bring that up is uh, the missus plays Ingress, uh, which is a Google augmented reality game for the Android operating system. So several nights last week, we drove around town to hack portals and link things. Interesting. I-N-G-R-E-S-S, -S, Ingress. Hmm. Oh, she may be going to get... She's wearing some really hot pants. <laughs> oh, she was exercising. Yes, yeah, she was. <laughs> Wouldn't you like the shirt better, though? Yeah, so look at the shirt, Bob. Doctor Who. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It was my goal to fit into it by tomorrow. Because when we bought it, it did not fit me. Do you know what tomorrow is, Bob? Saturday. Hoy is... Mañana es sábado. It's the day of the Doctor, the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. I don't know if I'll be able to watch that. I, I won't watch it live, but well, I don't think I can watch it live. I can't watch any of the new episodes because I don't have it. Uh, I haven't watched any of the season. Yeah. Okay. People wipe it like that. This is Ingress. Um, there's no portals or anything in involved in in range here, but. Um. I was going to say, maybe we could see one, but we can't. It's just, yeah. Well, anyway, we, 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 there's this map here, and the, the thing that keeps pumping is where we're at. And as we're driving around, we can... <laughs> there are... What is that? Is that an iPad? Uh, no, this is a Nexus 7. It's only an Android. Yeah, it's only an Android game. It's not an I I iOS game at all yet. I'm a little jealous. But um, these are these are some of my portals. So here's the one down the street. That's well, the, it doesn't show up nice. The, that thing is like fountaining up. All right, let's. Hmm. Nice. It's a little better. Yeah, I turned the brightness down on it somewhat, but... <laughs> There's two teams you can be on, the green team or the blue team, and each one represents something specific in the game. And there's a whole in-game story for what's going on and in-game world and, and all that. And it's... I don't necessarily... I don't personally have to play the actual thing. I, don't, I like driving her around, though, and she's like, Drive here! Turn here! Oh, I'm going to hack. Stay. <laughs> What's the name of it? Ingress. I-N-G-R-E-S-S. -S. So if you have an Android, oh, anything with Android on it, you should be able to get it. It's free. Is that a phone? Yes. Okay, good, because, yeah, you need GPS. Yes. So I have to set up my, my Bluetooth, or my... um. My hotspot on my on my iPhone and connect the tablet to it so that we can play. Install. Yay! Now she's your green team, right? Yeah, I'm the green. You're gonna want to join the green team so that you're on the same team. This is pretty cool. Now, when you're walking around and you're, I mean, just bring it up and, like, walk around town and stuff and go to, like, larger places, and you'll see portals, and you'll have to figure out how to play, too, because it took us a bit, but, yeah, you'll... Portals are based on um, art. Artist, like, parks so, and statues. Yeah, parks, statues, uh, sculptures. Hmm, so. uh, post offices, for some odd reason. <laughs> So if you have any statues in town there, you're going to want to go to one with ingress open, and you should have a portal there. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to end up on Mars or anything, am I? 
Well, if you do, you have to come back and tell me how to get there because I really want to go. <laughs> well, you know, the portal, the, the Mars portal. Oh, no, this is like a uh, computer terminal type portal. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's that kind of portal. Okay. Newish. Yes. All right, we're going to do a very awkward segue to Doctor Who because I kind of switched over and now we're going to switch back. On every Google in the world, except for the American Google, there's a Doctor Who doodle going on right now, which you can play as a video game. So if you went to google.com.au, which is the Australian Google, you can play the Doctor Who video game. Doctor Google. Yeah, it's a Doctor Hoodle. <laughs> Wow. I see I I guess I didn't realize there was more Googles. Yeah, there's one for every country. And I know that the New Zealand one also works, which is google.com.nz. So yeah, every Google in the world except the American one, just the regular dot com, has this Doctor Hoodle and I'm I'm really surprised. One thing that fascinates me about Doctor Who is the fact that there's such a uh, a following? I mean, there's like the people who watch Doctor Who are insane fucking Doctor Who fans. Um, you know, they've got the screwdriver. They've got the, you know, somewhere in their house is a small TARDIS. I mean, the, uh, I've got Daleks and, I mean. Yes, yes. And all my are. friends also have all these things. But constantly, daily, you, you see people who, um, you say things like, so you watch Doctor Who, and they're like, "What's that?" Never mind. There's like so many for everyone who totally loves it and obsessed with it. There's thirty other people who have never heard of it. Yeah, I've been there since I've been there since the '80s. So I mean, I've been a Doctor Who fan since long before this relaunch. I. I guess I would be a bit of a hipster because I put up with the bad and now that we've got the great and everybody else jumped on board, I, I'm i happy, I guess, that I'm getting more Doctor Who, but I'm sad that there's a bunch of bandwagoners that think that Rose, which is the first episode of the relaunch, was the first episode ever. Ah, right. But I'll tell you what, Rose is... Uh... Well, my Bangable? wife wouldn't let me have a rose. Bangable. Yes. Your I location would... will be collected by Google and shared with others, users of the product. Okay. Send me ingress-related events, promotions. Okay. <laughs> They're pretty cool. I would put it in Rose's butt. <laughs> Oh, well, and Billy, your wife wouldn't have a problem with that? Billy Piper's butt. Well, it's, it's not in her butt, so yeah, she's fine with that. <laughs> i got to write that one down. It's not in her butt. <laughs> Ooh, an agent name. Yeah, mine's really fancy. It's my name. Yeah, Bob is going to be Agent Bob, I'm guessing. Kane. Well, I had to use my first and last name because just my first name was taken. Ah. I'm going to try Kane. Okay. Transmit. But but tomorrow is the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who as we're recording this live. That's pretty cool. And it's even so why? We could record it. Retry. Code Over name there. already taken. <laughs> what if you did Kane and NSW? Good thinking. Or you could be DJ's Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. You are watching. Well, our one viewer, you are watching live. Bob, sign up for Ingress. It says code name contains invalid characters. Does it have to be all lowercase or something? I couldn't use any spaces or underscores or anything. No spaces, no underscores. I would assume no commas either. Hmm. But what if your name is D'Artagnan? <laughs> or 
Or asshole face. We'll take asshole face. Maybe. You can, I'm not gonna try you can that be one. agent asshole face. I'd be all like, hey, it took it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Agent asshole face. It's true. So I've lost 86 pounds. Nice. That's a lot of pounds. Yeah. I took a two-pound dump yesterday. <laughs> codename Bellet, please confirm. What's your code name, Bob? Kane MSW. Yeah. With a capital K and a capital MSW. Oh, it's oh. gonna talk to you. Talk. This is kinda of cool. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's going to talk to you a lot, Bob. Maybe I should have waited to do this. <laughs> oh, shit. See, I can hold up. Okay, so the, the blue you can, you can is... watch the video later. Okay, oh, go ahead on this, uh, for anybody who wants to join this, we still have a viewer, right? Yes. We want the green team. That's the enlightened. The enlightened seek to harness the power of the exotic matter to evolve mankind to a higher level. So, the green team wants to get everybody high, it says. Wait, no, just a higher level. Never mind. The resistance... I think, that, huh? I think that they would want to get everybody high. I want everybody to be high. Yeah. That way you'd be like, give me all your money. You're like, all right, man. <laughs> uh, the resistance seeks to battle the forces that are attempting to use exotic matter to enslave humanity. In, in Bismarck, the resistance is definitely way bigger than the enlightened. The resistance is more? In our, yeah, here, they're, they've got a lot more taken over. You gotta admit, though, it's a pretty cool name. The Resistance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, I'll set that there. That's that's fascinating. I may. I have a um, a landmark. Place right down the street here. I wonder if there's anything there. Actually, I, I wonder if there's anything in Indiana. Can you can you see a map? I mean, are you able yeah. to see a map at this point? I can see the map. It says this is the scanner map view. The triangle represents your location in the real world. Oh man, I'm in the real world. And you are. So so you can interact you with objects. You can pinch the map to zoom out to get a little bit bigger view to see if anything's close to you. In order to use the scanner, I need to walk. Well, I'm kind of tied to a fucking computer right now. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> and you're not going anywhere, sir. I am not. You can go somewhere to later. Turn this off for anything from now. Yeah, I don't want to, like, Do you see little sparkly purple things on your screen? It's it's showing me. Oh, oh that's not the camera. It's showing oh, me what to do. I see. You, he's so, still in the setup phase. Yeah, you you'll have to walk around when you're done with our show. Can I just hit the home button and get out of this for now, and it will continue in the same spot, or do I just leave it on like this? I don't know. Give it a try. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I'm pretty sure you. I I don't think it'll let you play before it calibrates. So I mean, you should be all right. Okay, it turned off. Kitty. What is my phone saying now? Your phone is about to explode. See? What? I made that part up. <laughs> kitty. Hello, kitty. The cat was looking at you like, that's not how it goes. <laughs> Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. Oh. 
<laughs> so yeah, I am a Doctor Who fan. I found the the older Doctor Who's, the classic Doctor Who's, to be a little slow compared to the uh, the newer ones. Well, you have to. If you went back and watched the first the first story, you would be probably lapsing into a coma pretty quickly because um, action. Uh, in terms of 1963 Doctor Who was what they said to get the camera rolling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's painful. Thanks. Um, the, uh, now granted, there's pretty lousy sets and things like that, but you got to expect that. Um, but it was just, now how does the fact that the Doctor's got a different face in the other ones, was it considered regenerating then, or just... The it's old al- actor died, so they got a new one. No, it's always been regeneration, and nobody's died in the role. Uh huh. So when William Hartnell, the first Doctor, when he decided that he was he didn't want to do the program, or when he when he realized he couldn't do it anymore because he was really sick at the time, um, they were like, "Well, this show is way too popular to cancel. What are we gonna do?" And they're like, "Wait, I got an idea." And then they brought in Patrick Troughton. And um, that little novelty thing was so awesome that they were like, we, that worked out really well. So and when they it, actually portrayed it as a regeneration at that time? Yeah. If you went, there's, I'm sure there's a YouTube video where you can watch every regeneration. So all 12 regenerations, 12, 13, I don't know, all the regenerations. So William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton, basically the screen kind of gets really washed out white and then Patrick Troughton's laying there. <laughs> Patrick nice. Troughton changing into John Pertwee was more of a something, heads are floating around Patrick Troughton and then boom, John Pertwee falls out of the TARDIS. That wasn't very exciting. In fact, that's the least exciting uh, regeneration that they'd done. Even the TARDIS has gone through a lot of changes from the start. But it leaves a, um, the earlier ones, that thing had to have been about that big. (laughs) Well, I mean, they had a full-size prop that they could stand in front of, but unlike now Doctor Who, where they can, you know, CGI in the interior of the TARDIS, the the old classic stuff, it was, we got to make sure the door doesn't open all the way because you don't want to see what's all the way in there because it's literally just a box. Yeah. And and I'm pretty sure you can find this somewhere. There's a there's a GIF comparison or something like that online of all the TARDISes that have been used, the props. Some of them are bigger, some of them are wider, some of them are shorter, some of them have a darker blue, some of them are a lighter blue, some are brighter blue. Nice. I've seen so much online. I've seen, like, a guy had a shed painted up to look like a... Uh, a TARDIS, and right next to it is a Dalek. I seen where they had it was in like a in a comic book shop. The door that lets the back was I mean you actually like push the door open just like the Doctor does. So it had the door next to it that doesn't open because you you know it was just like it would look like a big painting on the wall and door of the TARDIS. Uh, there's just so many much awesomeness. Which yes. Is, it feels weird having this only one ear, but there's no sound from you know, this. <laughs> it's okay. You do whatever makes you happy. Oh. When I go to craft shows, if I'm wearing a Doctor Who shirt, I have the random super fan <laughs> come up to me and freak out because they're probably usually wearing something Doctor Who also. So um, when we were at the Mall of America in Minnesota, this little... This little girl comes running up in front of me, and she's all, like, dancing around in front of us, and she had a Doctor Who shirt on, because I did, too. (laughs) And um, when I was up in Minot uh, earlier this month, a girl came up to me, and and, uh, she had a sweatshirt on, and she comes up, and she's like, oh, my God, I have to show you something. (laughs) She, she, She had a TARDIS on a necklace or something that I could already see, and then she showed me her T-shirt with <laughs> Doctor Who also. So I, I get that a lot. That's cool. When we, I, the, I used to get that a lot with Vampire. Remember the Malkavian shirt that I had? 
Yes, yes, I think so. The uh, we're in... at the Build a Bear workshop, you oh, put yeah. you put in a heart in the bear, and then they fluff it, st stick it with fluff. But the lady that or the girl that helped us, she was wearing the Doctor Who shirt, and uh, so we put two hearts into that bear. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I forgot about that. I totally forgot that. It's your bear. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm a tying bear. Did, did she doctor him up at all? I mean, did she make him at all appear like the doctor? Like, well, the, or? the best I could do was getting the little Converse shoes, but I couldn't get red. All I could get was black, and they didn't have any bow ties. Otherwise, I would have... The clothing yeah. options for the build bears were really limited, I thought. Yeah, he's pretty boring. It's okay, he's awesome. It was before Halloween, so most of the clothing was, um, like, costume. Halloween costume stuff for the bear, yeah. If I had a bear, I would totally put him in costume. If you had a bear... Um, I could make him a scarf. Ooh. I need to find my 20-foot scarf. I need to find a bear. <laughs> like. But we had to drive 600 miles to build a bear. Yeah, we had to drive 600 miles. Did you go there for the Build-A-Bear, or were you like, hey, let's just drive 600 miles away. Oh, look, here's a Build-A-Bear. Uh, no, see, we were there for, I don't know, uh, may have been some reason, I don't know, if you look at the shirt, it says Tension 9-Inch Nails. If you look at the yeah. back, it's got the list of all the events. Uh, the shirt was bought at the first event. I didn't realize oh. that I we were at the first event until we were at the first event. Have you heard Rock. of the Mall of America? Yeah, have you heard of the Mall of America? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's where we were. That's where we did the Build-A-Bear. And uh, that's where we got DJ's iPhone 5 S. What are you doing? I'm trying to do a different camera angle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Almost saw Bob's junk there. <laughs> the um, a friend of mine, they got a crocheted doctor. Um, <coughs> Wearing the uh, 3D glasses. Hell yeah. Thanks, kid. You're welcome. What did he bring you? <laughs> Looks like homemade macaroni and cheese. Okay. It's good, that you told, it's good that you told us that because what it looks like is fuzzy oatmeal from here. <laughs> that sounds good, too. <laughs> Boy, Not I bad. wish someone would bring me something to eat on camera. I just brought that up to the wrong camera, so it didn't look nearly as cool as it could. <laughs> <laughs> I almost took a drink. How sad is that? Let me try this again. <laughs> I still don't like it. <laughs> oh. Bring it back in ten minutes. Bring me a what? No, no apple. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a crocheted doctor with the three D glasses on. Remember the significance of the three D glasses? Yes, because anyone that travels through time has that wavy stuff going on. Not too much on that back. time. It wasn't time. What was it? The dimensions. Oh. Yes, because the Cybermen were alternate dimension Cybermen. That was you know, the, I, uh, the, uh, the big ball. The ghost episode. The, uh, they ghost? come back from uh, wherever it was that they were, and um, all of a sudden these ghosts just start appearing everywhere. And... Uh, Rose's mom was so happy that she was home because her grandfather was going to be there any minute. But her grandfather has been dead for years. Oh no, he's a ghost. But every day they have ghost hours. 
where the ghosts come. The ghosts turn out to be the Cybermen. Hmm. Yeah. I've always liked the Cybermen better than the Daleks. What was the episode where it had both the Daleks and the Cybermen? They were in two episodes, but in school, me, my friend Sean, and my friend Clay decided that we were going to be the 10th, 11th, and 12th Doctors. <laughs> my friend Sean ended up being the 10th, I was going to be the 11th, and Clay was going to be the 12th. So we each came up with our list of episodes. Weren't the 10th, 11th, and 12th doctors since we've been married? Well, yeah. So you were going to be them in high school? Earlier than high school, yeah. So you were going to be doctors that have been in the last 10 years, 20 years ago when you were in high school? Not actually, you know, those particular Matt and David, but just the next doctors. Yeah, we like whoever... At that point, we were planning on being the last three doctors is what we were doing. So you were making them up? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> we each I'm had our own little... actually going to be the last doctor. I fought for that, but Clay got it and whatever. I had two, dis <laughs> I had two distinctions as part of my run. I was going to have the longest run as the doctor, which I fought for and won. And I was also the only one to have a Daleks versus Cyberman episode. And yeah, and then Doctor Who actually does it, but they they punk out the Cyberman. I mean, the Dalek is a rolling garbage can with humanness inside of it, like that. Uh, remember Krang uh, from yeah. the Ninja Turtles? He was like that little alien guy in their chest. But still, that's, that's like saying, okay, we've got the baddest mofo in the universe and the other baddest mofo in the universe, but it's going to take 20 of these baddest mofos to take on this one. How is that even... No. Yeah, that's true. Now, um, did they get into what exactly the doctor did to destroy uh, Alfred, Alfred, the other Time Lords? The rumor about what tomorrow's episode is, is that we are going to find out what he did to do that. Hmm. So I was explaining that to my wife earlier, uh, because the episode where his daughter shows up, Jenny, uh, I'm not having a Jenny either, just saying, but wife won't let me, but that was uh, the doctor's daughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bob opened his mouth so you could feed him. <laughs> you got macaroni and cheese, sir. I have homemade Cliff Bar. I did have macaroni and cheese. No, I haven't. So, the guy before me, Sean, his, uh, his distinctions, he had like a really long run of brand new villains, like reoccurring villains. So he got to create a whole bunch. And I forget what Clay really fought for and got, but I, I managed to be the one that had the most, well, the longest run. But back then when we came up with all this, we, were, we weren't aware that it was going to become awesome and new and stuff. <laughs> A one villain group that I was really impressed with was uh, the family. Um, father of mine, mother of mine, sister of mine, brother of mine. Is that from That's when the one where the he... Bob Watch? Yes. Yes. He didn't know he was the doctor anymore. Um, and, yeah, that's what that was. He had a, um, at the end of that one, what he did to that family was he didn't kill them. They wanted to live forever, and he pretty much 
made that so. Doing things like um, he made the, uh, the the sun into a scarecrow, so he stands in the field like forever. Uh, I don't remember what he did with the mom and the dad, but like the daughter, it was saying how uh, she lives forever. He, he trapped her inside a mirror, all mirrors. So whenever you think that you see something out of the corner of your eye when you're looking in the mirror, that's her. Um, you know, so he like did something for each of them that made them all like forever, but yet he defeated them at the same time. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I I like best episode. What is the best episode in your opinion of the newer ones? Of the newer ones. Well, I can tell you that Matt Smith is not in the best episode of the newer ones. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> no, I did like Matt. I, I didn't like him in the beginning, but he grew on you. Not what? as much as David. He was he was a pretty cool, pretty cool doctor. Every doctor has some redeeming quality, even Matt. But I don't. I mean. Here's here's it's like you've been hired to coach the football team after the guy who's just won 27 straight world championships. Doesn't matter what the fuck you do, you will never be as great as that guy. So no matter what Matt Smith did, he is always going to be in my mind the guy who followed Happened yeah. to be following David Tennant, the most popular doctor ever. Right. So, like, my first doctor is Peter Davison, the fifth doctor. Now, he came right after Tom Baker, which is the previous most popular doctor ever. I assume that he also suffered that fate to those who did not see him first. But, I, you know, the. The, the first doctor holds a special place in my heart because that's who I started with. Yeah. Now, I started with the one where Rose started, and I like that doctor, but David, is it Ten, Tennant? Is that how you say it? Yeah, Tennant. He's cool. Okay. So I like the first one where Rose was, but he's not my favorite. Which is weird. That kind of breaks the tradition because normally your first doctor's is your favorite doctor. Well, see, I haven't found that to be true. Every single person I ask, they're like, "Oh, my favorite doctor is so and so," but I started with this guy. No. Huh. But people keep saying, "Well, your first doctor's always your favorite." No, I mean, I like Peter Davison, but he's not. He's not my favorite. <laughs> I stand corrected in a sitting down sort of way. Yes. Okay, so the doctor's daughter in that episode that you were talking yes. about before, that's actually David Tennant's wife. Wow. She looks like she's 18. Her name is Georgia Moffat. She is the daughter of Peter Davison, the fifth doctor. You know what? I heard that. That's so, like, that's very Time Lord type of shit right there. So there's a there's a uh, there's a meme picture out there that floats around of David Tennant's son talking to Georgia Moffat and the son says I think my favorite doctor is David Tennant and she goes well that's that's nice whatever his name is who's your second favorite doctor he and he said uh, Tom Baker and she's like okay who's your third favorite doctor? And then the kid goes, I don't have a third favorite doctor. And then George Moffat goes, well, granddad's going to be real real pleased to hear that. <laughs> and there's another meme floating around that says, it's weird to think that the doctor is married to his daughter, who is actually the daughter of the doctor, who's the previous version of the doctor, or something to that effect. It was really confusing. Yeah, it almost sounds like a fucking match made in Alabama. (laughs) (laughs) 
a match made in Alabama. <laughs> oh yeah, that's going on the list. <clears throat> now, I got more of a board game today. Have you ever played Heroescape? Yes, I have Heroescape. <laughs> you like it? Wait, wait. Maybe mine's Hero Quest. Hero Quest. I have Hero Quest also. Hero Quest is more like the Dungeons and Dragons, um, like board game, board game. Hero Escape has got like these little hexes that hook together, and so you make oh. this massive terrain, this battlefield that it has layers because the little hexes stack up. So you have like these. Um, if you do a search, a Google search for the um, Hero Escape. Well, just like an aeroscape, do an image search. Some of the battlefields uh, at, at Gen Con and shit, they have got like rooms that are like. It blows your mind when you see these things. Like, how the fuck can anybody do this? So, I recently have gotten more games from a friend of mine, and I already had two, and now I've got more. So you can hook them all together, and you can make like this massive, massive, uber, mega, mondo awesomeness. You know, to battle and kill stuff. Yeah, I've I've not played that. No. I the closest I've been to a miniature style situation is BattleTech. Um, it's like yeah. BattleTech, I think. Well, BattleTech me has the yeah the battle figures. Yeah. Well, me and another guy, we we found a guy who's really into BattleTech, and he was going to run us through a you know BattleTech like role playing game because I wanted to be a player. So he goes through all this trouble of the actual learning how to use the the mech combat stuff because you know we basically we just played the miniature combat so that we could learn how to operate the mechs in a war situation. Yeah. So we figured that all out, and then what the guy and I that were going to be playing basically discovered is that the guy teaching us didn't want to run the role playing part he just wanted to run combat situations <laughs> and I immediately shut down wow now Very in that game because I've seen stuff on it um, people who like it like it a lot my question though is are you a robot or are you a little guy inside a robot you are a little guy piloting a robot so you're at, it's a role playing game then that you get inside there and almost like the uh, oh what was the game that we were playing? No, you know what? You might not have been uh, Rifts. Did we play Rifts? No, I I don't play. I haven't played Rifts because I I have issues with non modern day games. Is what I'm discovering. <laughs> Rifts is a. Uh, the thing I liked about Rifts is that you could have it can be based in any time, anywhere, any setting. Um, in fact, a lot of it is futuristic -y stuff. Like a lot of it's futuristic -y because stuff is coming from other worlds and it's all like you know techliness. Well, had Chris not introduced me to Vampire, what I was attempting to do that first trip in Okinawa was recruit people for a BattleTech game. Because I figured that large mechanized robotic things would be cool, because I had D and D'd myself out, and I had Shadow run myself out. I wanted to try something else, and that's what I had. And and when I, you know, Chris and I were talking while I was standing gate guard duty, one day, uh, he goes, I I think I might have something that you might like better. And then he introduced me to the vampire concept. I'm like, I'll give that a shot. And uh, obviously, it lasted for. Uh, 20, 21 years. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I. That just you know standing there, of course. Here I am, fresh to battalion, and I see this strange looking motherfucker just stare me down. That's because you were cute, Bob. <laughs> well, I'm still cute, but uh, oh yeah, I I didn't know what to think. So as soon as like they broke, man, I'm bolting for my door. I was big on um. Because when I first got a battalion, I pretty much just stayed by myself. And yet, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, no, it didn't. It became... 
it became like here I um, you know I'm the guy who's quiet and stays in his room because he doesn't want to draw attention to myself. That drew a lot of attention to me as the quiet guy who stays in his room, and that didn't work the way that I was wanting it to. I wanted to just like be unnoticed. And by being unnoticed, that was a big sign saying, Ignore me! Nobody did. <laughs> That's right. We did not. I mean, like, nobody did. And it was weird that, that people would be like, um, You Miato? Every time they said that, I'm like, Oh, man, they pronounced my name right. What'd you hear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, look. Twenty years later, we're still having conversations. We are. I want to play a superhero game, but I can't find anybody else who wants to play a superhero game. We should we should play a superhero game, Bob. I totally want to play, and my friend wants to play too. And I told him, I said, um, you know, because he's the one who we were talking about playing vampire with. I said, would it be awesomest? Uh. Yeah, if instead of playing at your house through here and me playing at my house through here and you playing at your house through here and you know, but we come here, we all collect at our house as though we were playing here, but where DJ sits would be a laptop sitting there with the camera pointing at the rest of the room. That seems to make a little more sense um, for ease of gaming. So, but, but would I get to play? Like, would you be the GM, or would somebody else be the GM? Huh? I I want to be the superhero. I don't want to run the superhero. Oh, the superhero. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I know Chris runs. Um, a friend of mine, Chris, he ran last time. Now, like I said, John would be awesome at it, but I haven't talked to John in a while. Um, is is John the one that starts things but never finishes them? No, no, no. John's the one who they smoked a lot of weed, and my wife didn't want me hanging out over there. But he's the one with uh, Detective Reznor, and he's the oh, one who played the last. Oh, game. gotcha, gotcha. He was pretty. Um, that was a great game. What I played of it, uh, it was frustrating. I have to say that would probably be the frustrating that we were trying to create something for mutants. We had a school type thing with, um, like Xavier's school. Um, so basically, you had a hero, the hero high going on. Cause yeah, that's part of the. Unfortunately, every time we had something, the bad guys would come in and take over our ant hill, which is the way that would really work. They would come in and they would take like the kids that we had recruited, and they would take them to make them bad guys. And we'd like, okay, well we'll run over here. We will create a. Um, so here's this volcano or something, and we had this hideout in there. And sure enough, once we got everything the way that we needed it to be and started doing stuff, then comes the bad guys. And so it was frustrating, but I would think that that's the way that it would really work if we were to, say, live in a world like that. Well, no, because if you were in a volcano, that's obviously a villain hideout. <laughs> Oh, I don't remember if it was a volcano or not, but it was something that was like that. It was a uh, some sort of a beach type mountainy thing, and I don't know. That also I sounds think, like a villainous hideout. I think I ended up screwing up the game by I was a tech guy and I was able to pretty much make anything, and so I I set up I got online and I hacked into the system and I I made it to where. Um, I said it's where all the missiles in the world would launch at other places in the world, but I didn't make it happen. Instead, uh, I made the trigger for that, the pacemaker that I put into me and this girl, to where if either one of us were killed, that'd be the end of everything. And so you that selfish guy, bastard, you! <laughs> I know. Well, it was it was getting to the point where it just seemed to be getting a little out of hand. So I'm like, you know what? If we're going down, what does this button do? No, don't do that yet. Boy. All right. Okay, it's trying to get me to new software for the Apple, but I haven't had my Apple plugged into this computer in 
long, long times. Well, so yeah, so I think I fucked up that game. Gotcha. Like, why would you do that? Like, because if we die, then that's pretty much could be the end of everything. Anyways, because we're the only thing keeping this evil from taking over the world. So I, our death would mean everyone's death, anyways. I keep trying to convince the Knights of the Night to run a, a, a superhero game, and I keep getting told that they don't like the idea of a superhero game because that's not what they're into. But I think that I made some headway the other day because I keep explaining it. You're not going to be the campy spandex superheroes. And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, what you do is you do Arrow in a role-playing game. You've got... Somebody in a hood running around shooting arrows at people, diving into the character depth and doing super heroic things without, you know, having to fly or needing to wear a cape. And then, then they were like, "Okay, that's well, that's that's a lot better." <laughs> yeah. Well, when you think about it, the uh, the Dungeons and Dragons world, um, the average scores are thirteen is average. So if you go down there. Or I think actually 13 might have been like on the the higher average side. So people who have an 18 strength, uh, those are the bodybuilders. People who have the 18 intelligence or charisma. I mean, these are these are big people. Um, those would be the equivalent of superheroes, except they lived at a time where they carried swords. But if you were to have, I mean, basically any of those stories, your heroes are. They're not just regular people. They're, Bob bless you, they're heroes. Okay, so I listened to another podcast. You're going to like this, Bob. Do you still, do you run D&D for your friends and stuff? It's been a while. Um, I'm talking, well, I played uh, Gamma World here uh, a few months back. Well, I'm going to use D and D because they keep using this experience. This it's called Shark Bone, and uh, one of the ideas that keeps popping back up is, you know, you're always a bunch of adventurers going into a dungeon and looting things, and and the other guys are like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how it is. And like, what if you were the trolls living in the dungeon, and these assholes kept coming in and stealing all your shit? <laughs> and then they're like yeah, that's, that's a cool idea and then they're like well, wait a second let's get even deeper you are a society of whatever subterranean species and you have to exist in these dungeons and these guys come in slaughter everyone you know <laughs> steal all of your shiny stuff and basically you have to rebuild until other assholes with swords, so basically you're yeah, you're yeah. either playing out establishing this, or you're playing out the, you know what, I'm tired of being looted every 16 days. I am going out and I'm whooping some ass. Yeah, that's pretty cool. In fact, there was a uh, there was a game based on that. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but I had these fantasy posters, and each one of them had the picture on the front, and on the back told about it. And one of them was this this guy who looked kind of vampire-ish. He had, you know, he's very dark. He had the pointy ears. He had this little imp thing that so he was was on his shoulder. Um, and what it was talking about there was it was based on the fact that you don't know you're a bad guy when you start the game. And you're playing the game, and you start to learn that wait a minute, I think I'm the villain. But you don't know it. You don't even know it yet. Like we said before, look at Magneto. Magneto is the villain. But in his mind, he's the hero. He's trying to save his people. He's only the villain because we are told the situation from the, the perspective of Professor X's X-Men. Exactly. In from, any other... I mean, if the X-Men weren't yeah. there, he would just he would be just as much a hero as everybody else. He's just willing to go <laughs> the little extra a couple of miles. Yeah. yeah. Just like, like uh, Bennett. Yeah. Or, or the new... Glasses. Yeah, or the new Black Adam. It's all about justice. 
he's just willing to take yeah. justice in a certain direction. Right. So, Bob. Speaking of justice, huh? What? Speaking of justice, something here that I thought about before. I don't know if I mentioned to you, but I, I definitely feel that um, when you're looking at the whole superhero thing, yes, every town, every city, every village, every place, they should all have a Batman. A Batman should be like stationed in every freaking town, village, city, whatever in the world. But Superman, the super, there's only like maybe every 10 years or so a situation that comes up that would require Superman. You know, the... Um, no, the 9-11 thing, or like a super massive um, volcano is about to explode, or alien ships are shooting at people with laser, phaser, rifle blaster guns. But whatever the case, I mean, there, there should be a Batman there all the time, and then a Superman close, on call, just in case. Just saying. Okay. I understand that that's a, an, an idea. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was like one of my wife's comments. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I usually say. What did I say? Well, it, I, I, I wasn't listening. <laughs> That's how they get. That's how she gets you back, Bob. What I was gonna say before, Bob, is that is that we've kind of hit the hour already. What? I know. Oh my gosh. Well, we're gonna do our standard thing afterwards, and then you know, if we say something funny, which I'm pretty sure I have something in the gun for uh, that will make you laugh, we'll put that in the post credits of the of the post show. It's unfortunate that I, that I have me on the bottom of the camera here. I wonder if I can move me somewhere. Okay. So, here's the problem that I see, is that my eyes always look very squinty. Do you know why my eyes always look squinty? Because the shit. camera is up here, and the picture of you is here, and the picture of me is down here. So I'm always looking down instead of at the camera. Well, for me, the, my camera's right, right up here. And then you. Oh, that's my camera. Okay. Well, then you and me we're right here, and then I'm and, and you and me are down in the corner too. So yeah, I'm I'm always looking all over the place too. But I, I try to look at the the bigger part of the screen the most. Well, yeah. When you're talking, I'm usually like looking in your eyes because that's what you do when you talk to people. Wait. Right. That's not where your eyes are. They're far away. Hey, ladies. My eyes are up here. <laughs> anyway, we're going to end this, and we're going to do our normal thing, and we'll make some funny, and then we're going to go. Are you ready? I am ready. All right, let's cancel this show. Bye. Just the specific show. Ah. Okay, episode is officially over. Batman is always whining about, oh, I lost my parents in an alley. I'm an orphan. I had to grow up and fight villains because well, my parents died. Yeah. And then Superman like, is looking at him going, my whole species doesn't exist anymore. What are you complaining about? And then Batman just gets out and goes, but my parents died. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. This is the Lime Flavored Network. <laughs> I'm tired of being looted. <laughs> Potato salad. <laughs>